All right, welcome back to a new touch designer tutorial. And in this one, we are going to look at how you can map basically any texture onto pretty much any instance network that you want to map it on. So um, in this case, we're actually just working with SOP input. So I just created a bunch of different SOP based instancing networks here. And we also have a bunch of different textures, including like noise, uh, ramp, like an image, and also me in front of the camera. So a video device in. And um, <clears throat> yeah, basically, uh, we're just like, we just have an instancing network here, which can be anything, as I said, like we're, we're just like sort of going through here automatically through these. Uh, we have seven different networks. And then we're just using a little trick to con like converting this to chops. So we're converting SOPs to chops. And also like based on, on that info, we're like converting tops to chops. And then we're using that both as position and as color data data and the color is really like what this is all about here all right so let's just get going and rebuild this from scratch all right so i'm going to delete all of this and let's start with a little render network here because we're going to be working with instancing so we're going to need some kind of render network i'm just going to start with a little box here i'm going to add that box and go down to scale 2.03 and from the box i'm just going to add a geo a uh, camera, a light, all the usual stuff that we need for render network. I'm going to add a fong and just use that as a material here. We can just turn all of these off. I'm going to add two nulls. You can just press uh, shift and then just add two. Well, actually, then no. What? Never mind. Just add two nulls. <laughs> Um, I'm going to call one constraint, like just CS and the other one like LA for, for look at, look at, and I'm going to make them smaller as I always do. I'm going to make one white and I'm going to use this on the camera as a constraint too, and the look at as look at. Cool. Now I'm going to add a render top <coughs> and, um, just going to change this to like 1024 by 1024. Just gonna add a uh, no, call it BG. And uh, we might just wanna add like an RGB key here. And let's display that in the background. So we just have one lonely small box in the in an endless void now. So let's change that <coughs> by uh, first like turning on instancing. And then we wanna create some some data for this, right? We wanna create some instancing data. Cool. So uh, let, let, let's let us just start by um, creating a sphere. Actually, that's that's just what I'm going to start with. So I'm going to add a sphere, and I'm going to go to detail and just go up with like the rows and columns both to 50. We don't actually need to compute the normals, and we also don't need any texture coordinates here. So we actually want to turn these off. Uh, we might want to change the radius just slightly slightly bigger. So like we'll see later why I'm doing that. Right, so let's actually add this into a switch because we want to add more different like networks here. But for now, we can just leave it as it is. And what we want to do now is we want to add a null. And let's just call this SOP data. So obviously, you could just use this for uh, the instancing now. So you could just drag it in here, just select P0, P1, P2. And then we'd have our instances based on this sphere. But um, <clears throat> in this case, we don't actually want to want to do that. We want to convert back to, or not back, but we want to convert to chops before we do that. And you'll see why soon. So um, let's actually go ahead that, to, and do that. Let's actually do that twice. And in this first stop too, I just want to use the position X, Y, Z. That's totally fine. And for the second one, I, uh, I actually want to use texture UV and texture W. And you're gonna see unknown attribute UV. So it's like complaining now that we don't have texture data in there. So what we wanna use here to create that is a texture SOP. So we can just add that before the SOP data now. I'm gonna give it a color of like orange so we know it's sort of important. Just kind of orange. I'm gonna give the switch a color of blue and just make it bigger because it's also kind of important. All right. <clears throat> So now we have the U and V, U, U, V and W textures here and the TX, TY, TZ data here. So let's go ahead and work on these textures first. 
No, actually, let's just add a null here and call this pause for position. And let's go ahead and now use this on here. And now select t TX, TY, TZ. And it, it does the exact same thing, obviously, as just using this. But um, you're going to see why we do this in a second. Right. So now I'm going to add a top two from here. So it's going to give us an error because we don't actually have a top source. But um, basically what we're doing here, the way I understand this is that it, it just automatically sort of stretches that texture now onto these these texture coordinates. So I'm just going to add a noise. Now let's actually start with a ramp. It's a bit simpler. I'm going to change this to like 1024 by 1024, but it doesn't actually matter that much. And I'm going to give this a, a bunch of colors. So actually, let's just leave it as it is for now. Let's add a switch here. I'm going to give this a, like a violet color. And um, I'm going to add a null here. And let's just call this like text and put that onto the top two here. So now you can see this, this has changed, right? Before it was just the input and now it's like the, the data that's coming from here sort of mapped onto the input. It's the, the best way I can explain it. Right, so now I'm going to add another null here. And I'm just going to call this call for color. And I'm going to go to my Geo Instance 2 page, just drag this on here and just select the corresponding channels, R, G, and B. And that's actually sort of it already, right? We uh, like the main main point here is to use the SOP2 chop, right? Where we're just using the texture UV and the W and um, then also using a texture SOP. So we're actually creating the data. So this wouldn't actually work if we had our texture coordinates turned on here like this this doesn't work even if we have texture now on we actually have like have to have no texture coordinates coming in here and i don't actually know why but that's just the way it is and now what we can also do on the texture we can change the um, axes on which this is projected so you can see this better if we're like uh, animating the face here so i'm just going to type in abs time dot seconds times point i don't know point five so now this is actually coming towards us. And uh, I don't know why these are the same, but they are. <laughs> but you can also change this to X and then translate, uh, rotate this, for example, for like to like uh, 90 degrees. And then we're actually sort of like on the Y axis. Cool. So this is already working pretty well. Now back to why we're doing uh, this conversion on the chops here is why is uh, because I want to be able to use the alpha channel to not display some some uh, of my instances. So basically, on our geo here, if we go to our instance like main page, we have this active parameter that we can use. So if we can like uh, use the SOP right away, we can't actually access that active channel. So we want to add that channel to here, and we already have an alpha channel here, right? So what I can do now, I can go to my black here, and I can just go down with my alpha. So now you can see we're actually going from alpha to like white. Let's add some steps in here. So we have like a, some like full alpha here and then some like like uh, alpha off here. So it sort of looks like this. Now we still have our instances in there. You might not be able to see that super well right now, but, but they're still there. So to actually get rid of these instances, what we're going to do now Let's actually just push this over here a bit and just use a select here. Like one thing you might think uh, what could work is to just use the alpha. And now we can <laughs> access that. Let's just type an A. But um, well, let's let me add the floor so you can see that they're still there. So I'm going to add a grid. It could also just be a rectangle or whatever. And I'm going to use a geo. I'm going to change the already changed the grid <laughs> automatically and um, actually I'm going to change the light a bit so we can like see that and I'm also going to change the camera a bit so we can we're looking like from above and I'm going to like change the scale here to 10 and I'm going to move down the, the platform a bit so now you can see even though we um, added some alpha channel here 
that doesn't actually really make a difference, even though you might think it will work that way. But uh, there is a way that we can make it work. We can uh, just select the alpha channel here. We can use a merge here. And we can select this channel, like use this selected channel and just put it in there. And let's use this now for the active. So now you can see we're actually completely cutting away. We're literally not rendering those uh, instances that are that have zero alpha. So it, they're literally only not rendered if it's completely zero. So if, if you like push this up a bit, if it's like point whatever, then uh, it's still going to be rendered. So it's actually going to be completely at zero to to not be active. That's that's basically the technique. I'm now going to show you a few things that you can do with this to make it a bit more fun. So first off, obviously you can add color now because we we have all three channels in here, right? RGB and and A. Um, no, I mean only RGB are like interesting. Um, so first off, let's do that. I'm gonna add like a bit of blue here. I'm gonna add like a bit of red here. And um, let's actually push that all the way over there. Might want to add some kind of color here too. Even though you can barely see that. But now you can see we've uh, we've basically we've added some color to this. You can also add like an, another channel that's that has um, full alpha. These channel uh, these colors are super ugly now, but whatever. <laughs> I had way prettier ones before. Uh, but you can do this yourself. Uh, you can also change the type now. So we can change this to vertical. You can see that changes the way it behaves. We can change it to radial, which I really like in this case. I usually, I'm usually usually not a huge fan of radial. But for this case, it's actually super cool. You can also change it to circular. It's also very interesting. You can also change the period. And uh, yeah, just mess around with this as much as you want. There is no limit here. Cool. The second example I want to show you, I'm just going to create it from here. Uh, it's just a noise. Let's just change this to noise. And um, I'm going to go up a bit with my period to like maybe 1.2, no harmonics. And I'm going to go down with my exponent to like 0.2. And down with my offset to 0 and my amplitude to 1. And now on my output, I'm going to change alpha to noise, so we don't have like a like a like alpha as one, but actually have basically no transparency or full transparency actually. And um, then I'm going to put that into here. I'm going to change my index to one. I'm going to go back to my noise and go ahead and animate this abs time dot seconds times point two. Right. So now we've animated this. You can't actually see it super well. So what we might want to do here is add a lookup and a ramp. So we can again add some color. Now you can see we've got to like go down with the, the lower color again to no alpha. And then we can add some some colors into here. Let's just add the like changes to blue. Well, actually what we also might want to do why why it's, it looks not so great as before. We want to go up with the diffuse to one. We might also want to go up with our constant actually to one. So basically, really originally um, displaying the colors that are coming in here. So if I again now switch back to my noise, you can see uh, this is much better. Much like this is basically a one to one like representation of these colors. So let's actually go down up with the period here maybe yeah all right next one might be that we want to have like a movie file in and we always want to add like a fit uh, to make this squared let's just change it to 1024 to by 1024 as well just so we have the same thing and now we can just put that into the switch and yeah it's already above two so um might want to like scale this up a bit what we can also do is uh, just use a different 
image, of course. We just add like this butterfly. Let's go back to scale one. Right, and another thing, obviously, as I showed you before, we can use a video device in. And again, we might want to use a fit here. And uh, just change this to like fit outside. And there you can see me. And I'm going to put that in here, change the index to three, and now I can sort of interact with it. I'm going to change this to 30 hertz. And uh, yeah, now I'm interacting with it. I'm going to change this back to like Z. And no rotation. All right, so that's all the textures. And let's now look at a few different instance nets, networks that we can use here. So the first one, apart from the sphere now, might be that we want to use like a, a copy. So I'm going to use, just add a point, change its position to like 1.5. Then I'm going to add a convert. So we actually have converting this into polygons. Then I'm going to change a, uh, add a copy. And let's just change this to like, I don't know, 30. Or let's, let's go up to higher to like 50. Let's copy this parameter past the reference into the Z rotation. And let's just divide 360 by that value. So we have a perfect division, basically. Okay, I'm gonna just copy this again. Just um, like, I don't know, say 30 times. Just go down with the scale slightly, maybe 0.95. So we have this sort of look. <laughs> and I'm gonna put that in here, change the input to one. And then you can see we're mapping that perfectly onto our geometry. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and just animate the rotation here with abs time dot frame times 0.5 something, 0.3. I'm going to change this back to uh, the first one and just change this to uh, radio again. Man, these colors are like so ugly. Holy, holy moly. All right, there we go was just the yellow. <laughs> okay, I can't handle ugly colors. <laughs> okay, what you can also do, and uh, I'm just gonna copy this from somewhere else, but you can just drag your file into here. But basically, I'm just adding like a, a 3D model of a female head in here. You can just download that. I'm just gonna call this female. Just gonna, let's just call it female. And, um, what I can notice here by, by looking at it, it's uh, the center is actually somewhere there, which is kind of strange. I want everything to be perfectly centered. So to do that, I can add a transform. Let's always turn these viewers off because they're making stuff slow. You can go to post and just change everything to origin. So it's uh, nicely centered, right? So now zero is directly in the center of our model. And now to actually use this, because we already, we have like, I don't know, 100, 2000 something points. So let's go ahead and just add a sprinkle sub. And let's go ahead and change this maybe to like 5000 points. So we just uh, randomly distributing points over the surface of our model. And now we can uh, just use this, put that in here. Let's change our input to two. And actually on our transform, we also want to go down with the scale usually. So depending on your um, model that you're, that you're using, that you, you have to adapt this. Sometimes it's quite the small number you have to put in here. All right, let's move out a bit with uh, like on our constraint, maybe let's just move out a bit so we can see everything nicely. What we also want to do here, maybe on the on the lights, is go to shadows and just turn on soft shadows. Let's maybe put the light somewhere else, like, like here. It's looking good. Cool. And again, now we can go to our texture, we can change this to Y or to like X. It's really quite interesting. What we can also do, we can change our, the size of our boxes. So it looks more like particles. Or we can also uh, use a sphere here. And put that <coughs> into here. And that's slightly too big. <laughs> so let's change this to like 0.15 on all axes. Also looks interesting right now. <laughs> all right, that's still way too big, actually. Let's go down. Ah, uh, 0.015 is what I'm looking for. 
That's kind of a sweet spot. Cool. I think that looks even better. You might want to go down with the uh, details here to like maybe 10 by 10. Or actually just change it to a polygon and maybe, yeah, frequency 2 might be fine. But, you know, otherwise it might be a bit too much for your computer. Again, let's turn all of these viewers off because they're usually just taking away processing power. All right, and what we can do, we can just add a grid, for example, like a, like a simple example. So we just put that in here too and um, just change the input again. And you can see um, it doesn't actually work. It's going to complain. Let's turn off the texture coordinates. And uh, we can change our rows and columns here, for example, maybe 50 by 50. And let's change the size now. So like, I don't know, yeah, 2.2 .2 might be good. And um, yeah, we can also change this to be lying on the floor. And um, you can see, even though we have like this texture going on, it's going to like from left to right. That's because we need to change uh, our uh, projection axis. You just need to adapt that usually. So if you, if you want to, yeah, if you have the patience for that, <laughs> you can use the texture for each of these to, to perfectly align that to whatever you're working on here. But I mean, you might not even be working with the switch. I'm just using this so I can like show you different examples easily. But you don't have to like create every one of these. Okay, another cool thing is to use a box and a sprinkle. So we just create a box and uh, you just scale it up to like two. And then, then we use a sprinkle. And on the sprinkle, we're going to change the method to volume and the points again to like 5,000. So we have this volumetric cube. And now we can just put that in here again, change it to four, and there we go. Maybe make it a bit smaller. All right, nice. That was quick. <laughs> you can also go to uh, browse samples, by the way. So help, browse samples, and geo. And then you have a few things that are also quite interesting here. So for example, the octahedron, then you already have this uh, sort of shape pre-made for you. And uh, you can also, again, use that in combina oops, combination with a sprinkle. So uh, on this sprinkle, we might want to change it to surface again. Keep 5,000. Let's turn these viewers off. And uh, might want to turn the scale down to, to like point, point 0.3 maybe. And then put that in here. Change it to 5. And then you can see... This is working, but again, we sort of have this problem that it's not centered. So I want to go to post and change these all origin and like just leave it as center. And now it's perfectly centered. So if we switch between these, they're all like centered, right? Okay, last but not least, actually one of the coolest things, <laughs> you can add a sphere here. Um, let's go up with the rows and columns. Let's not compute the normals, and we also don't need any texture coordinates. And um, we might want to add a sort here. And just change this to random. Maybe change the seed, whatever. And let's add a, add a particle sop from here, which is really fun to work with here. So on this particle sop, I'm going to change this to render as uh, point sprites. Let's change uh, the birth to maybe 2000. Life expect can stay at like two. Let's make this active and turn adaptive homing on because that really triggers me. <laughs> and let's go to forces and just change the turbines to like one on all axes. Let's change the seed maybe to like nine. And um, yeah, let's now use this as another input in here. Go up one step. And now we have our texture on a particle system, right? Uh, we can go up with our turbulence. We can add a wind if we want. Might might actually want to stay like on on free with the life expectancy. But yeah, now you can uh, also change this to like free here, and now my camera is like on this particle system, right? You can sort of see my face for that, which is which is fun. And that is me. Why rap <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm just gonna like change just give you a few more ideas here. 
So one of them is that you, you can obviously not just use SOP data here. You could technically um, create these channels yourself and also, for example, just use like and create like an audio spectrum, right? And uh, I'm sorry about that <laughs> squeaky chair. Uh, so yeah, these channels don't have to come from SOPs, but uh, I, I found that to work pretty well. Obviously, you can use any input here, not just the ones that I have just uh, showed you. And uh, what you can also do, for example, uh, you could, yeah, let's actually just quickly do that. Um, just make this automatic, just so you know how that's done. Just add an LFO, a pulse. Let's go down to frequency to that 0.7. I'm gonna add a count. I'm gonna change this to limit and just loop in max, change this to like six. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven inputs. So yeah, six should be fine. We can use this now as an input and now we're like automatically switching through these, which is fun. And uh, this could obviously also be a, a kick, for example, like any kind of audio device in or, you know, uh, like an audio input. Uh, we can also make this the floor a bit more subtle. It's a bit too extreme. Just go down to diffuse here to like 0.2. And uh, you can use any input here, of course. Oh, God, I just dropped down my mic. <laughs> uh, and any input here. So you could use any, like you can use a video here. You can use a feedback system here, which is probably also super cool. So yeah, you're really free to, to use this in any way that you like. Cool. So, um... Thanks so much for watching <laughs> and thank, thank you so much to all the patrons that are really supporting me. Like really deeply thank you for making this possible. And uh, yeah, if you are on the Patreon already, there's some uh, extra content on there and you're just supporting me there. So I'm going to leave a link in the description. You can check that out. And uh, yeah, I will see you on the next video.